Hey guys, welcome back. It's Neom. We're going to talk about the comic book industry. And oh my God, Forbes is actually admitting that the comic book industry is in decline. I'm uh, shocked, but not really shocked. So we talked last week about the Oni Press Lion Forge merger and how it's basically you know two smaller companies merging to survive because the comic book industry the american comic book industry is not doing well despite the fact that uh, many people working in the business seem to think it's doing just dandy um you know the numbers would say otherwise so this is coming from forbes and we're going to talk about this uh in in relation to what we're seeing going on in crowdfunding uh today and really what the future of the comic book industry might look like this is coming from Forbes. What the Oni Press Lion Forge merger says about the shifting comic book industry. So it said two comic book publishers, Lion Forge and Oni Press, are merging. Uh, the New York Times reported the new company location will be Portland. It's basically Oni absorbing Lion Forge, as I understand it. So it's a big move in an industry that, thanks to a surge in superhero blockbusters over the past decade, is gaining more mainstream attention than ever while remaining relatively small. Uh, to learn more about what the merger says about the current state and potential future of comic book publishing, uh, I checked in with Shauna Kidman, Assistant Professor of Communications at UC San Diego and author of Comic Books Incorporated, How the Business of Comics Became the Business of Hollywood. Um, yeah, I you know, I would have liked to have seen I mean this is I'm not knocking Shauna Kidman, but I would have liked to have seen some some retailers maybe weigh in on this or some other publishers weigh in on this. But uh, you know, it's an interesting article anyway. To put this in perspective, the first thing I want to note is how incredibly small the comic book publishing industry is. Yeah, everybody knows everybody, and this is kind of a problem too with comics where if you get on the wrong side of some people you will not be able to work in the industry because everybody does know everybody even though comic book properties are utterly ubiquitous in pop culture and an unstoppable juggernaut at the box office comic books themselves are losing ground in visibility sales and general public interest you mean the general public just doesn't doesn't really care about comic books anymore and we're kind of seeing this uh, in the decline of the industry and the shuttering of comic book shops and the fact that these publishers have to merge to survive that idw is failing and that is on top of that's just you know generally speaking uh that's on top of all the the weirdness going on in the comic book industry um you know with people going on twitter and saying stupid things just, it's damaging an already damaged um industry so the U.S. has an estimated total of less than 2 million regular comic book readers, according to Kidman, meaning that while popular titles sell over 100,000 copies, if they're lucky, the majority move fewer than 20,000 copies. In addition, the shifting demographics of readership means that while certain genres like children's graphic novels are doing better than ever, the more traditional genres are losing readers. Small niches are becoming larger and big genres are losing their dominance, leading to a large industry overall, but one in which superhero comics and the comic book shops that stock, that stock them are taking a hit. Uh, industry representatives will be quick to note that 2018 was the biggest year on record for the business. That's partially because they shoehorned in all the, uh, all the crowdfunding and the, uh, the, the, the mysterious other channel to try to pad the numbers out. In reality, you know, the, the traditional comic shop, the superhero comics, uh, you know, comic shop direct market is definitely declining. I mean, you can see this, you know, every month you've got shops closing because they can't stay in business and people are like, well, it's the rent hikes that might explain what's going on in bigger urban areas but even then that's inflation if comic shops are actually doing that well you'd think they'd be able to keep, keep pace with inflation and they can't um so kidman goes on to say that number hasn't changed a great deal in the last four years yeah i mean the best case scenario is comic sales are stagnating and i think they're sort of juggling the numbers around to make it look like they're stagnating but they're actually declining uh they're declining so most of the growth was in children's graphic novels uh, such as scholastic uh not in issues of superhero comics from marvel DC, marvel or dc sales at comic book shops have been declining forbes coming out and saying sales at comic shops are declining the first takeaway then is that both oni and lion forge are very small and more than likely operating on tight margins yeah absolutely it's not surprising that the merger is already creating layoffs amid the restructuring uh, and then Lion Forge, a noted Lion Forge, already laid off 12 employees in November. In a good month, these two companies combined to make up just 1% market share at comic book shops. Yeah, neither one was was huge. Uh, I think Oni's biggest claim to fame currently 
is the Rick and Morty licensed comic. Uh, previously, they had a lot of success about 10 years ago with Scott Pilgrim, and I think they were kind of, uh, you know, I mean, they've done some other stuff too, but that was clearly their, their biggest hit. Uh, despite Lion Forge launching a number of graphic novel imprints aimed at young readers, the presses likely didn't fare much better at bookstores or via digital sales, Kidman explains. In short, they constitute a tiny portion of a minor industry, and they might have a better chance at survival together than apart, particularly if they consolidate overhead or, in other words, lay off redundant employees. The second takeaway is comics publishers need licensing deals. Licensing has sustained and supported comic book publishing from the, media, the medium's earliest days back in the 1940s as time has gone on. The need for adaptations and merchandising has only increased. Uh, Kidman says naming DC and Marvel is the biggest examples. Yeah, most of Marvel and DC's money doesn't come from comic books. It comes from like underwear, underoos, and t-shirts, and uh, ancillary merchandise. It does not come from the comic books themselves. They throw the characters on everything. And honestly, the movies now uh, do more to promote... Uh, Captain America underoos than, than the comic books have ever done. So DC was bought by Warner in the late 60s. Um, Stan Lee refocused his attention on Hollywood deal-making in the 70s for Marvel. Uh, independent publishers have followed the same track in a film adaptation of Oni Press. Uh, the uh, One Oni Press published comic series, Scott Pilgrim, helped drive sales of the comic despite underperforming at the box office. Uh, yeah, I mean, people picked up the comic because of the movie, but the comic was already popular. I mean, Scott Pilgrim, Scott Pilgrim was already popular and it sort of, it was right place, right time. When Scott Pilgrim came on the scene, manga was kind of exploding. Um, you know, the, the graphic novel scene was exploding. It was in the mid, you know, mid two thousands when it really took off and it was really right place, right time for Scott Pilgrim. Merging with Lion Forge, a newer player in the business, but one focused on transmedia opportunities could give Oni the foothold it needs. Together, these two very small players in publishing may also give the impression of having a large brand presence, both to online consumers and perhaps more importantly, to producers and studio executives. This is what this is about. This is where everything is going in comics. You know, everything is going to, to Hollywood. Um, everything is Hollywood. Comic books are basically just storyboards for potential movies now that's not how it should be that's not how it should be but that's how many people working in the industry view it which is why i think you don't really get a lot of give a shit you know by some of the people working in comics now because they're just passing through they're not here for the long term they're not here to you know make a 20 year 30 year career out of the comic book industry they're here to get a notch in their belt and move on to hollywood and even you know, big comics portals like Webtoon, we've talked about before, Webtoon uh, signed a deal a year or two ago with a major Hollywood uh, agency, and now they're trying to, you know, get their uh, properties picked up and turned into movies. That's what everybody's doing. So, that you know, I think that's part of the decline of comics is it's almost like everybody in comics is looking for a better job. They're all looking for another job. And some people get out and they get into animation, they get into Hollywood, whatever. But very few, very few people are in comics to say, hey, I'm going to camp out here and I'm going to try to make this industry the best it can be because they know they're not going to be here long term. One way or the other, they're either going to get out and go to Hollywood, get into another industry, or they're just going to, you know, uh, get out when the industry burns to the ground. And I think this is, you know, really kind of the attitude now with a lot of people working in comics, why they don't. Um, maybe don't care as much as their predecessors did because they, I think really deep down, a lot of people don't see a long-term future in it. They're just like, got to get in, got to make something, got to get a, a, a movie deal or a TV deal or something and get the hell out of, of comics because it's burning down. But then when people call them out, when people call them out that the comic book industry is burning down and there are better ways, viable ways to actually make comic books and make them for a living and actually make a good living. Uh, they, they, uh, you know, throw temper tantrums. They try to defame people uh, who are doing it. They, uh, you know, it, it's just, it's a, it's a crazy, crazy industry right now. And I think there's just a lot of people who just aren't very happy uh, you know, where they're at to put it mildly. And, um, they're just sort of lashing out at, uh, people who are being very successful. Now, this isn't really a terribly good example. Um, this is coming from our, our blog, uh, D uh, not a terribly good example because this actually was a licensed property earth. Well, it's not really licensed, but it was a video game. So it already had a leg up, 
Uh, but this is Doug Tenaple's Earthworm Gym project over in Indiegogo. It did $100,000 in a day. Like most people working in comics, most people, unless you're like one of the top shelf creators at Marvel or DC, you're not even going to see that in a year. You know, most of the people working at like IDW and Boom are lucky if they'd see that over the course of like five years. You know, it's 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 insane. But you know, before this, Tenaple had done Bigfoot Bill, and there are a lot of other really successful uh, Indiegogo campaigns now that are hitting six figures uh, pretty easily compared to Kickstarter, where a six figure campaign was kind of out of the the ordinary. You know, the Indiegogo campaigns have actually seemed to be doing uh, much better in terms of, um, you know, in terms of the, the, the dollar amounts on average. Again, Kickstarter does have some very, very large uh, crowdfunded comics, but it's not like, you know, normal for a Kickstarter, a comics Kickstarter, unless you're a mega, mega huge creator to hit six figures. So it's looking more and more that if you're actually in comics to make comics and you want to make money off of comics, that uh, you're going to have to start selling direct to consumer because the shops are, are dwindling. Now, they, they did talk about the graphic novel market uh, being up. Now, I've heard different things. I, I heard last year they said the graphic novel sales were down, but you know, it probably is healthier overall. They're probably counting. Here's the thing now, what constitutes a graphic novel? Because a lot of things that they're rolling into uh, graphic novel sales are actually uh, manga, you know, which uh, tends to have a different audience than, uh, you know, a run of the mill graphic novel, than an American graphic novel, and also books like uh, Dogman. They keep rolling uh, Dogman, and, uh, you know, for a while, I think Diary of a Wimpy Kid, and some of these books that are not, I wouldn't really call them graphic novels. I think they're more like hybrid type books. And they kind of roll them into the graphic novel category, which sort of, I think, skews the numbers. Because Dogman sold really well. Wimpy Kid sold really, really well. But there are some other books that I really would question as to whether, whether or not they're, they're true graphic novels. You know, they tend to be like a hybrid uh, type thing. So, um, you know, I think they're kind of, kind of uh, skewed that way. I mean, I haven't really seen... You know, even going back to when our kids, you know, were going to book fairs, and it wasn't that long ago because actually Geeky used to run the local book fair here. Um, but they weren't really picking up graphic novels in the way that I think, you know, the comics blogs and, and the publishing blogs would have you believe that, you know, uh, the graphic novels are just selling gangbusters to kids. And I mean, a lot of times, you know, they would sit there, a lot of the books from like first, second would be on clearance you know so i mean i don't know where i'm sure they're selling better than the average graphic novel in uh comic book shops or whatever but you know i don't know if they're selling gangbusters selling the numbers that they're trying to uh say that they are um anyway this does seem to be the future it is interesting to see at forbes and actually uh someone who specializes in, in following the comic book industry um uh kidman uh, that she follows the comic book industry is flat out saying, hey, comic shop sales are down. It's declining. Comic shops are declining. And I think the more that mainstream media picks up that, you know, comic shop sales are down, one of two things could happen. Either, either it'll be a wake-up call to Marvel and DC or Disney or Warners will just be like, yeah, it's declining. Let's just shut it down. Yeah, you know, let's just shut it down because there's no there's no return on investment. And we've got other things we're working on, like our streaming services and theme parks, and we really don't need to be you know chasing a dying comic book industry. And that's the worst case scenario. And I, I totally could see that happening, especially with Disney. I mean, they way overspent on Fox, and they're they're you know they just they're going to be buying Hulu and all this other stuff. Right now, they're focused on streaming content and theme parks. And, uh, you know, if they can save a couple of bucks on Marvel Comics, they totally would do it. I think they totally would do it. So we'll see where this goes. Um, it's going to be interesting to watch as more mainstream outlets uh, outside of the comic book blog Circle Jerk start talking about the state of the comic book industry and what that is going to mean for people working in the industry and for readers. So please subscribe to Clownfish TV. Uh, please subscribe. We found out that only 30% of our viewers or actually subscribe to the channel. So please subscribe to Clownfish TV for more pop culture, news, views, rants, gaming videos, and more. This has been Neon. I'll talk to you later. Hey guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.